This is a copy of the Restoration Heritage in historical context. The dates when certain things occurred, when certain books were written and things in our heritage and how it was in, in Western Europe. And that's a, would you be interested in that? Is that, can you hold down the excitement? Uh, okay. <laughs> now I'll pass these out. It may be noon, but look, you don't have to go home. Yeah, pass, so just pass out a I'm sorry. No, you're not. Oh, no, no, I am. <laughs> sorry, I stretched something. There. Make sure. Uh, this is also, and I've got three others. Okay. Don't, don't, don't believe there's nothing. Okay. You there had to leave for brain surgery or... After your last talk, yeah. we felt like it. So I hope we get you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Right. Right. You have your... Now, I'd right. like for to think about our heritage in its historical context. That's what this is for. This is not a substitute for anything I'm going to do, but uh, we're committed to a heritage, to a hermeneutic. Huh? I have a 40-page paper on the hermeneutics of Thomas Knowledge under Camel. Do you? And, yes, is that on your, your, yes, your website? Good. Yes. Doc, are you familiar with uh, Leroy Garrett's website? Oh, I, no, I'm not familiar with Leroy Garrett. Oh, good. Oh, website. I just love the publication. You make his occasional essays that he writes? I know him and have several of his books, but I don't have his website. He, he's got his, uh, he publishes an occasional essay, essay about every week. Who's that? Just like Leroy Garrett. Oh, yeah, a Restoration Review. Right. Yeah, I mean, you might want to hit that and uh, check out his, uh, his uh, essays. Soldier on, what's it called? Well, oh, no, I hear you. Everybody that wanted one, and I got three more, so don't leave. Don't go. Now, you girls are getting ready to leave. Well, I can see it now in your eyes. Did you get one of those? Oh, thank you, Doc. Now that's just the Restoration Heritage. Uh, now here is a study because of its uh, influence in our culture, New Age challenge to the church, and New Age in, in, came in the in the counterculture of the '60s and '70s, and uh, New Age isn't new, but they think it's new. Like Dean Brown at Yale used to say, confound the ancients, they've stolen all of our ideas. <laughs> That's a good line. There you go. Now I'm going to leave this one here with my brother here. He's going to cause an insurrection in China. But I want or something. <laughs> pass that down. And I, I, maybe I need one more. Uh, but this is a very good study. Not today, but study. There's tools in there. We need one more. I'm going to see that you get it. Because this brother's going to be fired for killing all these trees now. That's right. I want to protect him for doing this noble deed. Because I, I, I give people, if they're not interested, they don't need things that I pass out. But if they're interested, well, they need a whole lot more than I say. <laughs> You, is that it? Everybody? I see. Oh, I need And you know another one? Yeah. Oh, you just, I need yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you see what that is? But New Age comes, uh, the insurgence of Eastern religions and New Age pantheism came in the 60s in the counterculture. And uh, it's not another subject, but it's just a result from some of these things. And the counterculture was against the culture, and they meant for that the university and the church and education. You know, there's revolution to every place, or the educational mode, or uh, the church. And pardon me, you're taking pictures. I've got to pass these out, you know. You don't want me to pass out, do you, Chris? No. no. That's why we got the camera rolling. Oh. Just in case. Pardon me, lady. You've got to have proof for the lawyer. Oh, yeah. Win that funniest home Well, as soon as, uh, <laughs> in, in our, now here's another very important paper. This is on social construction and social misconstruction of, and the tools are in there. This is a, a study in itself. I, I wouldn't even, issue, right? it's a fundamental issue. Because postmodernism says all reality is socially constructed. And part of that's true. My shirt is socially constructed, but the universe isn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is that enough? Thank you so much. It's, that's not enough, but I mean, all I have. More. See, oh, that's all you have? I, well, all I have is me. We need one more. I'm going to pass, pass that up. You thank it. Thank you. Thank you. You're a good man. I appreciate <laughs> you coming. Now, don't leave because I've got two more to give you. And then I'll have to get ready to commence to get ready to start. Now, that's, that is a result of 30s and 40s 
And uh, Durkheim, you know, if you've done social theory, you know that. Well, the sociology of knowledge says that all social structures and linguistic structures creates its own reality. Well, that's postmodernism. If that's true, you understand that annihilates Christianity and it annihilates science, and annihilates a few other things, but I'm gonna take it all down. They're gonna write first class on the Titanic. They're not just gonna take Christianity down. I'm gonna take it all down if they want to go down. And here's another paper on narrative displacement in the theories of scientific methods, science and philosophy. Now you girls need this, I know that, I can see that in your eyes. Your eyes sparkle just like you've got light bulbs in the back of them. So. Those two are the rubber rods over there, aren't they? No, that's why I put them there. Don, can I just draw out a question real quick? No question about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where do the folks from the Frankfurt School fit into all of this? Well, the Frankfurt School, uh, this is very important in, in social social theory. The Frankfurt School were rebelling against against uh, the structuralism and the the relativism, and they're trying. They're Marxists, first of all. Right. And that isn't good or bad until yeah, yeah. till we've examined it. The Frankfurt <laughs> School is Marxist. So they're taking the Marxian, the classical Marxian, positivistic, mechanical, materialistic view to interpret social structure. But a major thing still with us, but only those interested in the history of ideas with Frankfurt, they think it's Frankfurt, Indiana. But not, I will talk to you about it. I just, no, no, I just, I just kidding. But oh, no, no, but, but they I fit social in, theory. But they do fit into this mix. Oh my gosh, yes, they do. But the Frankfurt School, this is a, this is a, a social theory uh, based in neo-Marxist interpretation uh, that uh, that must be dealt with. And, and a lot of those folks came here to America and then infected our. Oh, infected the social sciences. Right. You talk about disease transmission, those babies did that. And I got this uh, on secularism. Now secularism, this is the history of the idea, but the word, uh, this is not what I'm talking about today, but uh, secularism is the result of all this scientific development because secular is this world, this world versus Greece. See, it's all over. The, the secular world is all the world there is. So secular is not just uh, going to the mall on Sundays and drinking cigarettes and just chewing tobacco and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. I don't drink and I don't chew and I don't go with girls who do. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, sorry. But secularism is, is a result. Any ISM point, look at your lexicon. Any lexicon, uh, newer lexicon, will trace the history of words coming into English. And I, uh, postmodernism comes in in the 1980s. It's been here a long time. It doesn't show up one day in 1980. Oh, I just finally got here. Uh, and secularism is a is a rebellion against sacred, secular. Oh, that's sacred, and this is secular. That's a polarization of reality. Dichotomy. It's a dichotomy that's in, ontologically impossible to sustain. Not possible. That means that the sacred part has nothing to do with what? The sacred. I mean, the secular part has nothing to do with the sacred. Well, uh, that that may be true, but that annihilates uh, Christianity if that's true. So. Um, again, trying to remove God from the animal. Oh, well. Again, postmodern, even the belligerent posterior for horses in anatomy, would not say that you couldn't believe in God, but He has nothing to do with anything. Well, that's uh, hardly, uh, hardly a neutral position, see. But they're neutral, they're objective. Uh, we're prejudiced, we're Bible thumpers, redneck, southern Illinois Bible thumper. And, uh, or you're concerned, it's like, it's like the, the Democrats, they color code, uh, these are yellow and these are conservative. Well, what does that mean, please? Well, that means you believe something or that you just make it up as you go in the power play. All right, we'll return to this category so we can make some, some comments on the postmodern mind, but just to brief you, that paper that I gave you, you said this would be on? It's like 
few slides after that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I just wanted to give you, this is Sire's Discipleship of the Mind. I don't mean that you need Sire's. It's in Hesselgrave, a number of sources of what constitutes a worldview. That everyone has one. It's not just a weird thing that the Calvinists made up and, and talk about novels, you know, the history of the concept of worldviews. No. Yeah. Have, you read, have you read Sire's new book? Was it Naming the Elephant or something? Oh, like yes, that? I got it. Uh, I'm going to use that since you brought it out. Okay, good. Now, uh, he used a, a, a classical uh, elephant and the blind men. 